Hello, welcome to More Than Organized Monday. Um, per usual, there's something different going on with the technology, so we'll see what happens. But um, I'm happy to be here today on Martin Luther King Day. Um, you know, it's always a dilemma if I want to work or not on the holiday Mondays, but this is really fun and fast to do. So here I am talking about what else but sacred money archetypes a couple times a month we tie in how sacred money your sacred money archetype might just be causing some clutter issues and how to deal with that so today we're going to go into the romantic and as you might realize from just the descriptor of the word romantic this is someone that likes things to be lush and exciting and um it's a very textural and lush and um, oh, what's a good word to luxuriant and abundant mindset. It is all about having exquisite things around you, which is great unless all you have is a bunch of exquisite things around you and you don't really deal with things or use the things you're buying. Um, I find a lot of my clients that are romantics have um, precious items that they save, but they don't use because they're precious and they're for something special. And that specialness never quite arrives because they don't do a whole lot um, to get themselves there. It's all about the appearance in a way. And um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I love having exquisite, just the right things to use. The trick is finding something that fills that need while still allowing you to work without all the clutter. Um, and so, you know, what, what toys are actually in your way and you've just acquired the toys to have this exquisite life versus what are the ones that are actually practical and usable, right? So at what point does the textual, um, portion of being a romantic start to hinder you, right? How, what's the right level for you? So take a little bit, um, see what, what is in your life that doesn't meet that standard. Get rid of those things. What, um, what isn't exquisite? What are some things that you bought to make do while you couldn't afford the real thing you wanted? What can you move out of the way to get the actual thing you wanted? Um, what What's still in the packaging? It's not the packaging that's exquisite or it's the you know internal packaging. So instead of something that's in a box, in a box, in a box, take it out so it's just the actual vessel that the thing comes in, not the box around it. Um, if there's extra pieces of a game. Can you get rid of those extra pieces or buy a new version of the game so it's complete? Is there, um, you know, uh, the example I used in the email sequence I, I wrote about this is, yes, you want to sit around playing backgammon, but does it have to be on the cheap back, back of the car version of backgammon? Or can you buy a really exquisite velvet and leather backgammon set, right? That's where knowing that you're a romantic and how to make the things in your life really align with who and how you want to be that romantic can make a world of difference. The struggle with being a romantic is that self-worth doesn't come from the things. It comes from how you use those things. And so um, that's often an overlooked piece, I believe. Think about what you can do to bring just the right things that you get to use to live and be how you want to be, right? It's not about piling up a hoard. It's about um, creating that exquisite life. So hopefully this was, was of interest to you and gave you some insight. Um, the good news is romantics always believe there's more. So it's fairly easy to get rid of things, right? There's always going to be more and a better version of it. Anyway, have a delightful day and I will see you next week.